one of the most iconic vehicles of the 60s, 70s, 80s is a VW Beetle. Um, but we also know that the VW Beetle's only got 40 horses, which is not exactly exciting. So to make it exciting, we decided to put a V8 into it, um, which you cannot do onto a standard Beetle chassis. So to put a big V8 in it, build new chassis, and if you're gonna build a new chassis, build new suspension, and if you build new suspension, put on bigger brakes, and then put the big V8 in it, in the middle of the car, mid-mounted, not at the rear as on the original, and then run it through a six-speed transaxle. This all makes sense in theory, but how does one actually go about making this vehicle and getting it to drive down the road? When we build a vehicle for a, a customer, one of the first steps, apart from building the chassis and everything else, is to source a good donor body. When we started this particular vehicle, our spray painter had mentioned that there had been a Beetle standing in his workshop that he had been working on for a customer. Needless to say, it was a stock standard Beetle. The vehicle itself was in a very good condition. The body was in good nick because some work had already been done to it. And it also happened to be quite close to the color that our American customer asked for. Once the car arrived at the workshop, one of the first things that needs to be done is to remove the body of the chassis. It's not a complicated process. In fact, a beetle body is held onto the chassis by just, I don't know, 15 or 20 bolts. And we remove the body and the chassis gets pushed one side. It's the perfect donor, but if you intend putting a big V8 in the back, we do have a space issue. If you can imagine on the Beetle where the back seat goes and all that petrol tank where the engine went at the back, all that gets cut out. So that we only left with almost the silhouette of the shell plus the four fenders. There's also some reinforcing that we put back in. There's some hull steel work. There's some welding up. We changed the dashboard significantly. So there's quite a lot of prepping work that's done by us before the body goes back to Quirbus, the spray painter and then he starts with all his work.
So we've done a couple of dozen of these chassis already and we have them in stock. So we would allocate one of those chassis towards this particular project. And then from our stores department, we would then start allocating the suspension and all the mechanical bits that would go onto the chassis. At the same time, while all that is happening, we need to source an engine. And in this particular case, we found a 40 valve Audi engine and then a six speed manual gearbox. And then from the UK, we would order the clutch, the pl pressure plate, flywheel, all the bits and pieces. So everything is now happening in the workshop. Apart from all what I've just mentioned, it needs electrics, it needs an ECU, it needs a whole lot of stuff. And then, then on this particular project, we were asked for two turbos, so that had to be sourced. So there's a lot of work that happens in the workshop prior to the body coming back to us. The chassis it, itself is an aluminium chassis. It consists of about 38 panels, which are laser cut and CNC bent. The aluminium is um, 5082, which is a particular grade which is used a lot in shipbuilding and petrol tankers, that kind of thing. We fit all the components within a jig, so they fit with a tolerance of 0.1 millimeter within each other. And on this jig where it gets secured, it then gets welded by a, obviously a graded um, aluminium welder. The process of welding takes on average about 12, 12 hours to complete and the prepping before welding is about two days worth of work. When we receive an order for a beetle, a VH style beetle, there is quite an option list of, and we try and fulfill what the customer has requested, obviously up to a point. On this particular vehicle, we were given a color spec um, which is a BMW charcoal color that we used. But then there were some other exciting options which we always enjoy doing is, and that is that the customer had asked for a roll cage within the vehicle. We didn't want to get a full competition roll cage into the car because it would make it just impossible, just about impossible for him to climb in and out. So we've got a stock standard roll cage it is made of chromoly, so it's incredibly strong. And we had to work out how we were gonna build this roll cage such that we could have it on the chassis while we're testing and afterwards be able to put the body over it. And in fact, it became a bit complicated. The, the roll cage had to move into the body and then the body and the roll cage together had to be fitted back onto the chassis. Apart from that, um, the particular vehicle has got Halibrand rims, front and rear, with a 12 and a half inch wide rim at the back and an eight and a half inch rim at the front. The request was for two turbochargers, um, which have their own complication. One doesn't just stick to turbochargers onto an engine. You have to lower the compression on the engine, and then you have to water feed the two turbos, oil feed both turbos, and then build quite a complicated exhaust system and integrate a intercooler into all this. Um, so yes, it was a bit challenging, but it's ended up as a very exciting vehicle. There are quite a few steps. When we build the exhaust system, we have to have the body on the car because we have to see where the exhaust are gonna clear, especially now with the two turbochargers. And then we wanted the two pipes to come out the center of the body. So. There's a point where the body goes on, we design the exhaust system. While the body is on, we look for other um, routing of electrics to tail lights, all that kind of stuff. The body comes off again. With the body then off, we can drive the car, we can test the car, we can do all the, let's call it the dirty work of looking for, for oil leaks, water temperatures, all that kind of stuff. We can do all that much easier without the body on. Apart from the fact that the body might be in our way, it's just safer because with everybody around the vehicle, we could scratch somewhere a beautifully prepared body. So we simply leave the body off, do all our testing. When, when we are happy that everything's 100%, only then do we start refitting the body um, and the upholstery and the carpeting and all that kind of stuff.
Once the car's assembled, including the body, we, we get to the most tricky bit and the most nerve-wracking bit, and that is to take her down to the dyno and, and drive the car hard. We, we can't do that kind of testing and setup on our roads. Um, it just doesn't make sense and is bloody dangerous. So we take it down to the dyno, which means it's on a rolling road. It means that you can put the vehicle through all the scenario of what it would go through on the road. Um, you have a massive fan blowing air onto the front of the car, as would have happened had you driven down the road. So there's air across the radiator. And then we drive it through the gears and we did all the testing when we did power, power runs, we do in fourth gear. So to give you an idea, when we did the one power run up to 6,000 RPM in fourth gear, we were already reaching 220 kilometers per hour. So that explains why we can't possibly do this on the road. Once it's on the dyno and the, and the, and the car's actually driving, one can pull the, the program up, the ECU map, and you can adjust all the parameters, which means fuel to air mixture. When does it change in, in the range of acceleration? At this RPM, what must it be? At that RPM, what must it be? How much do the injectors open and close? Um, it, all these little things can't be done on the road. So that's, that's the real reason for being at the diner. Obviously, we also, at that point, look at temperatures. Does the, does the engine temperature suddenly climb? Does the oil pressure drop? And of course, we all stand around praying that the thing's not going to explode. But it all went very well. We got some incredible figures. And we we're very, very happy with the engine and drivetrain. We would always supply the car in, a, in what we call a safe mode. So we're not, we're not pushing it to the extremes. Um, we ran a low boost, we, we ran 0.3 bar of a boost. We had our fuel pressure, at realistic fuel pressure. We had the injectors using 60% of the duty cycle. So we, we're really not pushing the limits. Even at that scenario with the rev limiter set at just on 6,000 RPM, we were getting just short of 300 kilowatt and about 480 Newton meter torque. Once we're back from the dyno, we start the final assembly. So on the dyno, we don't have the fenders and stuff on the vehicle. So fenders need to go back on, and once fenders go on, the electrics to all those lights can be connected. Final carpeting goes in, the final seats go in, which in this case is um, black Nappa leather seats, door panels, door locks, glass. The glass in the, in the car wasn't all fitted, so there's some windows that need to go in, window winder mechanisms, all the final little bits and pieces make the hooter work. Is the steering wheel center. All these little bits and pieces get done with the vehicle back in the workshop. With the final assembly completed, we then spend time polishing the car, put a nice layer of polish onto the body. As I always say to the guys, the last five or 10% of the vehicle is 40% of the work. This is one of many vehicles we built, but each vehicle has got its own character, its own time in the workshop. Um, at 3L Engineering, we, we specialize in building bespoke vehicles, and this is definitely a bespoke vehicle. Um, at the moment on the planet, there isn't another one with this particular spec. So there isn't another one with the 40 valve engine, with two turbos, with these rims. And we, we enjoy that. To be frank, we, we don't enjoy building repetitive one after the other exactly the same. 
So we, we, we really enjoy something unique, and this is definitely a very unique vehicle. This particular vehicle has the Audi 4.2 V8. We're very excited to also now offer the Chevy LS1, 2, and 3 engine options. Completely different to the Audi, but a whole new challenge for us in the workshop. New chassis design, new engine mounts, new exhaust, etc. But we're really looking forward to it in our next vehicle.